let's talk about the segment addition postulate. We're going to start out with a warm-up that hopefully is pretty easy. In this diagram, I see three segments. I see segment AB, which is 15 inches long, and segment BC, which is 32 inches long. And the question is, what is the length of segment AC? So how long is the entire segment? And if you guessed that the answer was 47 inches, you're correct. Because to get to the total length of AC, you would add up the two smaller segments. So 15 plus 32 gives me a total of 47 inches. And that, in a nutshell, is the segment addition postulate. The segment addition postulate says that if point B is between points A and C, then AB plus BC equals AC. So little part plus little part equals the whole thing. Now there's one important word in this postulate, and that's the word between. Whenever it's said that a point is between two other points, it is assumed that all three points are collinear. So it's, in order to use the segment addition postulate, all three points must be on the same line. They have to be collinear. Oftentimes you won't be given that diagram though. You'll be given a description of the diagram and you'll have to draw it for yourself. Let's give it a try. Point Y lies between points X and Z. If XY is 25 centimeters and YZ is 17 centimeters, how long is XZ? Well, first we need to draw a diagram. There are three points described in our problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw three points. And I went ahead and drew them so that they were collinear because it said that one of the points was between the other two, which means that they must all lie on the same line. Y is the point that's between the other two, so I'm gonna label the point in the middle Y. And then I'll label the other two points X and Z, or Z and X, it doesn't matter which one you put where. Now let's label the diagram with the numerical information we were given. We were told that XY is 25 centimeters long, so I'll put that information right here on segment XY. And I'm told that YZ is 17 centimeters long, so I'll put that information right there. So the question is, how long is XZ? XZ is the entire segment, so in order to figure out that length, we'll need to use the segment addition postulate. We'll add up XY and YZ, the two little segments, and that'll give us the entire segment. So let's plug in what we know. XY is 25 and YZ is 17. So if I add those together, I get 42. So that means that the length of XZ is 42 centimeters. Let's take a look at our next example. We're being asked to calculate the length of FG. Do you think it makes sense this time to add the two numbers on the diagram together, like what we did in the previous example? Probably not, right? Because one of those numbers, 213, that's the length of the entire segment. And 109 is part of the entire segment, and what we're being asked to find is the other part of the entire segment. So it wouldn't make much sense to add 213 to 109. Instead, we're going to have to subtract. Let's go ahead and set up our segment addition postulate so you can see what I mean. For this diagram, our segment addition postulate would look like this. FG plus GH equals FH. So let's plug in the information from our diagram. I'm going to have to leave FG as FG because that's the length that I don't know. It's what I'm looking for. You can actually call it X if it makes you more comfortable. GH is labeled as 109 and FH is labeled as 213, so I plugged those numbers in accordingly. So if I want to solve for FG, well, this is a really straightforward equation, right? I would just subtract 109 from both sides and get my answer of 104. So FG must be 104 meters. It is important that you don't just leave it as 104. You should label every answer with whatever units you were given. Whether it's inches or meters or kilometers or whatever it is, don't just leave your answer as a number. Make sure your answer is a number with a unit. Let's try another example where we have to draw the diagram. Point V lies between points U and W. So I need three points, and they have to be collinear because it says that one is between the others. So I'll draw a line between all three points. V is the point that lies between the other two points, so I'll label this point as V, and then I'll put U and W on either side. 
Now let's label this diagram with the numerical information we've been given. It says that UV is 16 kilometers, so I'll put that right there. And then it says that UW is 57 kilometers. Now, if you're not paying a lot of attention, you might have put 57 right here. But it says that UW is 57, and this little length right here is VW. So that's not the right place to put this number. 57 is the length of the entire segment. So to label that, don't just put a 57 out here in the middle of the air, because that's kind of confusing of what exactly is 57 labeling. Anytime you're labeling a segment that's made up of more than one segment, like this situation, you're going to want to use a bracket to identify how far that 57 kilometers actually covers. So by putting a bracket from U to W, I can see by looking at this diagram that 57 is the length of UW. So let's calculate the missing length. How long is VW? Well, for this segment, my segment addition postulate would be UV plus VW, that's a little part plus little part, equals UW, which is the whole thing. Let's plug in what we know. UV is 16. VW is what I don't know, so I'll just leave it as VW. And UW is 57. So to solve, I would need to subtract 16 from both sides and figure out that VW is 41 kilometers. Now we can also use the segment addition postulate even if our lengths are given as algebraic expressions, like this. For this diagram, the segment addition postulate would be RS plus ST equals RT. Now you don't have to write this every time, but especially on more complicated problems like this, I do recommend writing your segment addition postulate first so that you can plug in your numbers or your expressions more easily. For example, RS is 2x plus 3. ST is 5x minus 7, and RT is 38. Now you might be saying, well wait a second, where did 38 come from? I don't see 38 anywhere on this diagram. And you're right, it's not on the diagram. Sometimes you'll be given a diagram and extra information in the directions. So be sure to look everywhere for all of the information that you might need. In this case, the 38 is coming from the original directions. Now let's solve this equation. The first thing I need to do is combine like terms. I see a 2x and a 5x, that becomes 7x, and a 3 and a minus 7, that becomes minus 4. To solve, I need to add 4 to both sides, and then divide both sides by 7. But wait, there's more, because that's not actually what I was asked to calculate. The directions didn't say calculate the value of the variable. The direction said to calculate the length of each segment. How am I supposed to do that? Well, now that I know that x is 6, I can just plug x into each of those algebraic expressions that represented the lengths of rs and st. Let me show you what I mean. rs is 2x plus 3, and we just figured out that x was 6. So instead of saying that rs is 2x plus 3, I can say that rs is 2 times 6 plus 3, because x was 6. 2 times 6 is 12 and 12 plus 3 is 15. So RS has to be 15 units. Now you'll notice I used units instead of inches or yards or centimeters because we weren't told what units we were supposed to be working in. Anytime you have a situation like this where you weren't told if it was meters or feet or whatever, units is what you're going to label your answer with. Let's also calculate the length of ST by plugging in 6 for X. So ST would be 30 minus 7, which is 23. Now it's always a good idea to double check your answer. Remember the original instructions told us that the length of RT was 38. And now I figured out that RS is 15 and ST is 23. If I add 15 and 23, do I get 38? Yeah, I do. So I must have done this correctly. Our next problem again requires us to draw our own diagram. Point Q lies between points P and R, so I'm going to draw myself three points in a line. And I'm going to label Q as the point in the middle, and P and R on either side. Now I'll label my diagram with each of those algebraic expressions. PQ is 8x plus 13, QR is 5x minus 4, and PR is 9x plus 17. Remember to label an entire segment like that. Go ahead and use brackets to indicate how far that measurement goes. 
For this, I would set up my segment addition postulate as PQ plus QR equals PR, and then plug in each of my expressions accordingly. Now let's combine like terms. 8x plus 5x is 13x, and 13 minus 4 is 9. Now I'll subtract 9x from both sides, then subtract 9 from both sides, and finally divide by 4. So I end up with an answer of x equaling 2. Now this part of the problem should be the easy part. You learned how to solve equations like this back in Algebra 1. You also did a bunch of equation solving like this back in middle school. So this part should be the easy part, but that does not mean that you should rush through it. Take your time. Make sure you're solving each step correctly. Just because this should be the easy part doesn't mean that you should do it carelessly. Now that I know x is 2, I can plug 2 in to figure out the length of each of these three segments. PQ would end up being 29 units, QR is 6 units, and PR is 35 units. Now you might be looking at those answers and thinking, wow, my diagram didn't match that at all. PQ is 29 and QR is 6. Well, that's not what this diagram looks like. PQ is supposed to be almost 5 times as long, but PQ is actually shorter. But don't worry about that. Your diagram, when you first sketch it, you have no real information to indicate what length each of those should be, so you're just making your best guess. If your diagram doesn't actually match what your answers were supposed to be, that's fine, as long as you can prove that these two add up to the entire thing. PQ is this little part, QR is this little part, and PR is the whole thing. So I can double check my answer, not by looking at my diagram, but by looking at my final answers. Is 29 plus 6 equal to 35? Yeah, it is. So I must have done this correctly. And that is all you need to know for a basic introduction to the segment addition postulate. Up next, you'll be extending this concept to problems that have more than two segments at a time. See you then!